The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All righty. So check it out. I'm actually on the road right now with this band called Disciple. A lot of you guys have known them. A lot of you guys have heard their music, and you're probably listening to some of their music on the, on the radio stations that we're on uh, tonight. But I'm actually in a hotel room in, where, are we in Lent? Where's it at? Lewiston. Lewiston. Idaho. I was going to say Lexington. Lewiston, Idaho. And uh, we've been on the road. We were, in, um, we were in Oregon. We did a couple stops. We did Troy. And then the other one was... Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana. Troy, Montana. Yes, it was Lewiston, amazing. Lewiston, Idaho tonight. Amazing, amazing shows. Traveling with these guys. I, Kevin, I love you. Your band is amazing as well. You guys are cool. I'm hanging out with you guys on the bus. And uh, you guys are the real deal. Uh, shredding every night, bringing the show. But you're also a preacher boy too, bringing the heat with the gospel. Well, so I've been a fan of yours for a long time. You know, like every time we've ever been around you, you just have that personality. You know, there's always that guy that you want to. You're like, I want to hang out with that guy. Oh you know? man! And talk. And I love like. And we do that. We we get to hang out and, yeah. and talk, and it's always good. And I kind of have to kind of be like i gotta go to bed man <laughs> <You know? laughs> can't talk anymore sorry about it i know. know the first night on the bus we stayed till four in the morning and i i, I was so tired because we didn't sleep the night I before because we traveled but i'm like i'm in the bus with kevin right now oh, we're let's chilling hang, dude let's hang man let's, let's keep talk. it rolling yeah it's fun no dude it's and i hope that we do much more stuff together and and you know uh, we met back in like 2008 when I first got saved. We were at my dad's if church. If you say so, it all runs together to me. I'm like the years. I'm like, what does? I, I just, know. I just know because I got saved in 2008, and that's around that time. But dude, I agree with you. The amount of events that we do, it blurs. Yeah, it blurs together. I remember us being outside somewhere, and I don't know if it was like a driving range, a shooting range, <laughs> or something, and there was this. Iron Hyde, the Transformers truck that this guy had. That's I just remember weird, weird memories like that. I don't know what we were doing, but I but I specifically remember the church, and I remember it being packed and and just amazing. It Lots was of there was a there was a Transformer. It's funny because I didn't remember that until you said that there was yeah. a Transformer truck or some, yeah, some huge iron lifted. hide and he talked and he it would speak and he had it talking and all this kind of stuff and yeah i grew up a huge transformers fan and so oh he was, right i was trying to was trying to play it cool <laughs> that's awesome well anyway you 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 pioneered you know with with uh at my dad's church in the 80s uh striper was one of the bands that came out of my dad's church in that in that era and then you know things changed culture changed with my dad's church but then when i got saved I brought back like, hey, let's start getting some rock bands in here, some hip hop bands, some metal bands. Let's do some parties. And you guys came and, and did an event. And that was the first like loud rock, you know, getting it going in our church. But that pioneered uh, even to ne now, 14 years later, still doing awesome stuff uh, at my dad's church. So thank you for coming out. And I met you and you look the same. You're just uh, you're just as hyper <laughs> singing and preaching and still doing it. And it still hurts. <laughs> there's more now it hurts, yeah it's always hurt people are like what how do you how do you do that i'm like you just go you just do it there's only one way to do it yeah you know? do you, so you've been doing it since the 90s yeah you've been around for it doesn't it honestly does not feel like that long like i i i, I do the math and i'm like is, seriously i don't feel very much different but i am yeah you know how long how long uh how many shows do you think you do a year we do between uh, eighty five to a hundred a year. Hundred a year. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a lot. And you you basically live on the road. I mean, it's yeah. How, how much time do you think it's you spend on, on the road? Uh, about five to six months out of the year. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, solid to say. It's cool though. Uh, uh, you know, I've worked it out, and you know, I could be wrong. Usually, am, but uh, I I feel like that six months that I'm home. Yeah. I don't really hang out with friends very much, yeah. uh, whatever my wife wants to go do, but I'm like there for my kids, yeah. you know, and, uh, yeah. getting them up for school, making breakfast, you know, picking them up from school, you know, when I'm home, helping homework, you know, taking my son to baseball, playing golf with, you know, my daughter going to cheerleading games with one of my other daughters, you know, and, and, uh, just, just there, yeah. whatever they need. And I feel like, I could be wrong, but yeah. like a nine to five person, mm -hmm. you know, they have that little window of time mm -hmm. at the end of each day, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and uh, like I'm, I'm just available for them the whole time, you know, yeah. the whole time. And so even though I'm gone a lot, 
when I am home, it's it's there. a lot of a lot of dad time. They're probably like, "Go back out on the road, dad. Get back on the You're road. You're in my space. I know your wife. I know that your wife's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I she's, really, I really missed you. No, but. she's actually, she's actually, she actually wants me home and likes me home. She just doesn't <laughs> like our checking account when I'm home. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, you know the only thing that fills the uh, the checking account from my side of things is when I'm on the road. So, exactly. Yeah, it's a it's a love hate thing. It's like I want you to be here, but I need you to put some <laughs> put some money in that checking it, account. Touring, so get out of here. touring, it's a whole nother animal for people that that don't understand. And yeah. you know, actually, that that's that's a good thing to even talk about because we're I'm at your show, you know, and you're uh, oh I'm with you. We're on we're on tour together. You yeah. invited me out, and again, I don't know if I told you. Uh, Thank you very much. It's an honor and privilege to, to be out with you. I um, think that the, uh, the honor is way more mine, but th- but thank you. It's been it's been fun, and um, you know we're going out. I'm I'm kind of opening up the the event, just sharing my testimony, and then you guys come play. You rock hard. People are getting to do it, and then you you preach. You give the gospel, and kids are coming up to me after the show, and they're like, like one kid was like, man, I want to I want to get involved in the music industry. You know what do I do? And you know I, I play guitar and. And that's a lot of these kids that are going to be, and even adults that, that are listening to the show tonight, and they want to know, like, how do I even get, where do I even start? You know, and I, I told this kid, and you, I know you're going to just tell the whole story of how it goes down, but <laughs> I said, listen, man, I said, it's baby steps. You know, I, I know you're probably looking like, I see myself on stage playing in front of a crowd of people, but I'm like, there are so many steps by faith to get you there. He goes, well, you know, I've been praying that maybe I just start by getting involved in worship at yeah. my, uh, my church. I'm like, that is a great step because yeah. God might open the door for you to get involved with worship. And then you might meet someone when you're doing worship somewhere in that circle, that's yeah. going to open the next door for you. You know, you asked me this question before. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to answer it differently. Uh, this time, uh, you know, Really, with everything that you do, you kind of you kind of have to take into account you only have one life. Right. You have to figure out what you want to do, whether you do it well or you know or great or pretty good. Is it is it your passion? Is it what you you know? Is it what you want to do with your life? Because there are going to be times where you are riding high and then there's going to be times where you are mm-hmm. not riding high and yeah. it doesn't really matter which what you pick that's for everybody yeah i mean you name name an artist you yeah. know that's made it yep. they still had moments where they were down mm-hmm. yep. you know and um for us like this is my passion this is what i'm into this is what i want to do this is what i feel like i was born to do yeah and so guess what did i deliver pizzas while I was doing this, yes. Yep. Did I work at Captain D's while I was doing this? Yes. Work at Little Caesars? Yes. Roofed houses? Yes. Sold Kirby vacuum cleaners door to door? Barely going to get into heaven for that evil job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, the blood of Jesus will save many, but Kirby, Kirby vacuum cleaner salesman, <laughs> we have to pray extra hard to get in. <laughs> hey, but no, I like, I like that, what you said. Dude, and it's like... No, you know, there's not, it's like, when am I going to make it? No, there is no making it. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it to make it, then don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. There's no, it's, it's, you're doing it to do it. To do it. That's, that's what you're doing it for. Yeah. There's no making it. Yeah. You know, like making it, it doesn't mean anything because, you know, I learned that because we've been learned, we've, we have been nominated for uh, about 16 Dove Awards, which is like the Christian version of the Grammys. Yeah. That's and lost and lost and lost and lost and lost and right. lost and lost. And then finally one won. And when I won it, I was like, well, I don't, man, I felt so bad losing all those years. Now, I've, now I've won one. And I was and then, like, yeah, but I don't even, what is this? doesn't even mean anything like what actually meant something was the grind that was what i remember yeah. that was where yeah. the where the reward was like yeah. that you know remember when we drove from uh you know blah 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 to south dakota and we had to whatever we did the show and we played for you know six people and then one of those people gave their lives to christ like man that that was awesome those weekend, are the right rewards. you know it's like yeah. dude yeah. that yeah that that's better than that award you know that that treasure that's like yeah. i'm doing this remember when we did this thing whatever Remember when we were making that record and whatever, blah, 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 like that journey, you know, doing it. Mm-hmm. So again, for people that want to make it, yeah. lay it on the, lay making it on the altar and make the, the doing the thing that you're passionate about. That's 
that's Spe- the real reward. Speaking about that, I was uh, one of my friends. He's a real estate agent, and uh, I don't Orange County. And he was talking about because um, he's made it. I mean, he's he's made it like right. financially crazy. I'm like, I, I booked him for as a DJ when I did a music festival for Circa. Where like he was 15 years old, and I put him on stage to open up for uh, Wu Tang. <laughs> wow. And so we were, he's like, I can't believe you put me in that situation. Wow. I'm like, I'm like, I saw that you had, yeah. you, you had it, you were yeah. passionate yeah. and I put, I put you in the sickest, you know, position, but now I see him, he's a, he's a young kid back then and he grew up and now he's super successful. But in the, in this little uh, video he made, he said, God, he's like, people come to me and go, you know, how do I make it? And this and that I need yeah. to, I, like, I, I need to get to the to the end of the rainbow to the pot of gold and he's like it's not about that's the make it i gotta make it to the pot of gold at the end no. of the rainbow he's all it's not about make it to the end of the rainbow to the pot of gold he goes the gold is the journey yeah the gold is the road it's every single day don't keep your eyes on the gold making it it's the journey that's that's the gold you know i i, I wish i wish i could have went and told talked to my younger self and uh i think that the even more better advice that I love to give to people mm-hmm. is how special they are. I know a lot of people are like, Oh, everybody's, everybody's special, you know, and, and kind of says it, you know, with a little bit of, you know, sarcasm or yeah. whatever. But the truth is this is whenever you are doing something as Americans, we always think in terms of being the best or number one, right. Or making it, Making it, yep. you know, like yep. there's this level and everything is quantified by some kind of number. How many albums did you sell? Right. How many number one singles do you have? Yeah. How many people are at the show? You know, how many, how many shows did you play this year? Yeah. So there's always a number to yeah. quantify, you know, your, your value. worth, your value or yeah. your worth. Yeah. And I wish somebody would have told me this or, you know, I could go back in time and tell myself this earlier. You know, I look at guys like a, a voice like Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. I think he's the worst singer <laughs> like ever right i think he's terrible yeah but yet his songs are absolutely magical Mm -hmm. and and the only thing the thing that makes his songs magical is really him Mm -hmm. and his voice Mm -hmm. is not that great of a singer he would never win american idol or the voice or Mm -hmm. anything like that but he has something that nobody else had yeah and yeah. it, and if and if he if he sat back and was just like, well, I'm not that great or whatever, I'm not that thing. That's the beautiful thing about art, is, yeah, you know, every the world tries to make art like a competition. You know, oh, who's who's the best? But but art's not like that, man. Yeah, art is like it's you. And you know, we were talking about this on the bus the other night. You know, like our story, art is a way for you to tell your story. And I know I'm not the best singer in the world, but I get to tell my story through my art, you know, and I get to sing the way that we sing and all this kind of stuff. And, and, uh, you know, I would love to go back in time and tell my old self, you know, like, Hey man, you can't do what they can do. All right. You can't sing like them, but they can't sing like you either. Yep. Exactly. You be you don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to, you know, just don't try to be like that person. Don't try to be like that person. You be you because the, the, the thing that's going to resonate with other people is when you're actually being yourself, all this time that you're spending trying to be this thing or this other thing that you think is great. No one cares about that. (laughs) They want you. And uh, when you, when you think about it like that, it's, it's Ephesians 2, uh, 10. It's like you are God's masterpiece. Yeah. And he, the whole reason he saved you was to create for you to do these good works that he planned for you a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It's like, he's got a plan for you that only you can do. And I don't know if it's your, a, 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 a heating and air guy or a mechanic or a teacher or a stay at home mom or whatever. Yeah. He's got this masterpiece yeah. that only you can do the people that cross your path that only you can reach. You know, and uh, and people are like, when are when are you going to stop this? I'm like, stop this. What are you talking about? You're like, this, this is, is what like, I'm created like, for. Like, this is what you know. And yeah. stop this to do what? Yeah. To sit at home and watch football. I'm trying like I, I like that's what I'm tempted to do. I don't want to do that. It's like this is what I'm born to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like there is no stopping and doing this to do what? I know. You know, that, I, it's funny because there's there's a there's a line that I say when I'm in schools, and I say, "There's only one of you. There's only ever going to be one of you. And you were created." For a specific plan and purpose, why you're here on planet Earth, and no one else can do it. And it's it's that it's it's literally it that verse, that masterpiece. Yes. And um and when you're in that, 
when you're walking in that, that's where you find the peace. That's where you find the joy because you know that you are doing what you were created for. And I also like what you're saying. Just be you. That's, that's what the, that's what we want is that's the authenticity. And that's where people will relate because it's unique. It's not just a knockoff of, yeah. Oh, this guy sounds like this or this guy, yeah, man, you, they want that's, and you only, f- you only walk in that when you find your identity in Christ, Absolutely. because, because th- if not, you're trying to mimic all these, these other things in the world. Like which same, is knockoff. It's not real. Being a, you're, you're a speaker and you're an amazing speaker, right. you know, and I'm, I'm sure you maybe have done this like I have as well. Cause you know, I do a little bit of speaking and you might like incorporate, you hear somebody else's cool thing that they yeah. say and you try to incorporate their thing and it never really works. Does it? Mm-hmm. it? It just doesn't, you know, cause it wasn't you. Yeah. It's like, you're taking somebody else's thing and kind of putting it in and it, but when it's your thing and mm-hmm. it's like the Holy spirit, like working through you, it's like, that's when you see, this magical thing again. I, I, again, Bob Dylan is the perfect example for me. Maybe not for somebody else. Maybe there's a great, a better example. But I look at him and I'm like, I appreciate him mm-hmm. so much for not being the the most handsome guy, not being all the things that the world says you got to be this and you got to be that. It's like, no, dude, he was himself. He has. Yeah style and all this whatever just like you know and if you don't like it get out of the way bro yeah yeah. like i'm gonna be me and i'm gonna sing this song and watch this boom here it is this is me and so instead of like pursuing this other thing i I guess i've kind of figured out i just want to be the best version of me just Mm -hmm. because i don't want to be settled with just being me yeah i want to be a better Mm -hmm. me because the me that i am right now is pretty good but i can be a better me Mm -hmm. you know and so that's kind of where I'm, where I've, I, where I've landed. I wish I could, you know, go back and redo it, mm-hmm. redo it all, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and instead of like pursuing whatever, you know, social media is showing you or what the record label is right. trying to get you to right. do. And they yeah. put you in these writing sessions with all these guys and yeah. trying to make you into this thing. And, you know, and I tried real hard, but you know, at the end of the day, it was like, you know, the songs that really worked was the ones where that was, were you, it was me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's that is the issue is is hearing all the different voices mm. and and you get lost in that that whole shuffle. Um, that, that's very important, I guess. If the if I could look back and tell the old me, the younger me, I would say, don't try to rush everything to get things done. Like God, let God work out his purpose in your life yeah and he takes you one step at a time because i'm always like i like to get things done fast and yeah and you know and, and everyone everyone wants to do whatever they do to do it well and, and have it grow right and be successful but you got to wait on god for him to open yeah. one door at a time and just enjoy the ride yeah enjoy those moments dude i know when a, when a kid comes up and asks those questions you yeah. know i always feel bad because you know, I, I want to give that kid like the five step, yeah, the five steps to being successful and yeah. famous and like and making it. You know, because yeah. I know that that's what they're yeah. wanting, and it's like it's not what they want to hear. Is like you just need to keep being you, and you're like, they're like, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, that's the worst <laughs> advice, you know. Yeah. And you're going, no, 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 no man, no, this is it, this, this is it, this and is they're it. like, ah, oh, no, I want you to tell me like, who do I need to call? You know, what do I need to do? Uh-huh. What, what producer do I need to get with? And it's like. Oh man, you know, I've worked with great producers and I've worked with, you know, just hungry producers and producers that are kind of, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it, that doesn't matter as much as you think it does, you know, and I've been on record labels and I've been independent and it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. You know, we've, we've written some, we've written some great songs that that have terrible recordings and guess what? People love them. them. I listen back. I'm like, God, it sounds awful. And it's some of our best songs sound awful. Yeah. It has the Bob Dylan yeah. thing, man. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, it's I, art. I can't, it's art. I can't explain it's, it's it. It's art. It's art. I can't explain it. And so I remember going, I remember walking up. I remember the actual artist. I won't, I won't out them. Uh, but it was a Christian, <laughs> it was a Christian artist. And I said, I said the very same thing. I was like, I've got this, I've got this uh, album. We just finished it. What do, what do I need to do? And she was like, you know. I already said she, so okay, whatever. Oh, I'll, just say, I'll just say, I'll leave it at that. I'll hey, say, scoot back just a little bit yeah. because we got we got some video uh, okay, footage sorry. of you. I don't out. want you to look like the headless horseman. <laughs> Uh, okay, she, she so, like, it's a, so it's a like, boy. She's like, it's so yeah. hard. It's so hard to make it, you know, yeah. and 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 it's so so difficult, you know, whatever. And it just crushed me, it like just all the things I didn't want. Oh, it's so hard to make it, you know. And it's like, well, yeah. 
And so now I'm like, yeah, it's hard to make it, but you do it anyway. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, you yeah. go. Do you love you it or not? Don't stop. Yeah. Everybody's going to tell you you can't make it. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Don't listen to a single one of them. You go. You be you. And do whatever it takes. Like, I mean, I'm I'm roofing houses yeah. and playing shows on the weekend. I am, you know, working at a place, a Christian bookstore, working, uh, selling gym equipment, you know, at a place and then but playing shows on the weekend. You do whatever it is you can do. I remember in the early days, we would tithe to the tithe to the band to just try to make pay the bills and whatever. Yeah. You figure it out, man. You do. You do what you need to need to do and just so, go for it. So how old were, okay, so you, I don't know if we said this, but your dad is a choir director. We did not say that yet. Your yeah. dad was a choir director and he got you into music at a young age. At a very young age. So how, what did that look like? I was, I, I was very blessed to have the father that I had. He just passed away five months ago. And um, he was a choir director. I grew up in East Tennessee around Knoxville, <clears throat> Knoxville a little town called Maryville. And, um, you know, Southern gospel in the household was such a, was such a blessing for me because Southern gospel is very melodic and lots of harmonies. Mm -hmm. And so he's just always singing and his way of bonding with me. He, he had me singing on stage at like five years old. And, um, you know, we always listening to these Southern gospel tracks in the car and, you know, going wherever we were going, yeah. he, he would be singing and, you know, and he'd be like, Hey, come on, Kev, jump in, you know? And, and I'd start singing, he'd harmonize with me and, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, back in those days, I don't know if you remember, I don't know how it was in California, but in the South, we would have those, uh, tracks where you'd sing at church, you know, people would sing with tracks. They'd go up, a. You know, they don't do it so much anymore because we all have worship bands. You know, the yeah. only music at church now is a worship band. But back in the day, they'd be like, oh, here's so-and-so is going to come up and sing a song. And they sing with some track, you know, whatever. Oh, no way. Like back in the uh, 80s. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think we had worship bands back then. Yeah. So y'all, y'all were way ahead. Well, we didn't have that <laughs> over here in the poor South. All right. We didn't have that. We had just, you know, Brother Mike is going to come up and sing, sing a song. A track. He's going to sing a track. <laughs> And, uh, so my dad, we would, you know, we would sing in church together, you know, and, um, it was, it was awesome. Um, and I tried to be good at everything else that I could be good at. And I just sports wasn't, and- I was addicted to sports, love sports, you know, still to this day, like last night, even, uh, playing racquetball with mm-hmm. Josiah, our guitar player. I mean, we just, he's like, you know, y'all play, you just tell me the sport. It doesn't matter what it, doesn't it is. Matter. You, yeah. you want to go play shuffleboard? It's like, yes, I do. Is it a game? Is there a winner and a loser? All right, let's go. Yeah, you know? competitive. Nice. Yes, I yeah. want, you know, and uh, so it, I've always been that way, but just didn't have the genetics for it, didn't have the talent for it, but the drive I had, you know. Right. I was not very good at baseball, not great at basketball, not very good at football. I had the body of a fourth grade girl, but now I've got the body of a seventh grade girl, so I'm <laughs> a little bit bigger now. Uh, and uh, but you know, like I, you can't tell me you can't you can't tell me no. You know what I mean? Just that yeah. drive. I'll do anything. I'll try anything. Like yeah. I told you, yeah. like surfing. I didn't yeah. have anybody to teach me. That was a good story. I didn't have anybody to teach me, but I'm in Bali, Indonesia, and I'm like, I heard this is the ultimate destination to surf, so yes. I'm going. I almost lost my life out there. You, know? <laughs> well, you went for it. Like Dude, that's so amazing. I got a little bit of a screw loose. You and, know? And, and Surfer's Paradise in Australia. Surfers. The two the two spots, you didn't know how to surf, but you ended up there yes. surfing, learning. And no one even showed you how to do it. No one showed me anything. Oh, uh, we were there playing uh, uh, Easter Fest. was a festival that was in Easter Australia. Easter Fest that was in Australia. Yeah, yep. I think we were playing uh, that and... Um, and I don't know how we ended up in Surfer's Paradise. I can't remember that part of it, but I remember there was a guy and he had some surfboards. And, Toowoomba. And, Toowoomba is and where it was. let us borrow some boards and That's awesome. we got out there and almost lost my life that day too. Or almost took someone else's. Fire shark. <laughs> oh yeah, we almost ran someone over. I did run someone Dude, over. if you would have ran him over, you would have bled and you were in Australia, you would have got eaten alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So question how, okay. So you're singing in your church. How'd you get into rock? What were you listening to? How'd you get exposed to rock? So I had a youth pastor and, and, and I don't remember what age I was. It's, I was like 11, I think 11 or 12. And he introduced me to a, a Christian metal band called white cross, mm-hmm. gave me their album. He said, man, I think, I think you'd like this. And it changed my life, man. Um, literally changed my life. And, uh, I think of the story of the, the little kid with fish and loaves of bread, how it's just nothing, but he gave it to Jesus and Jesus did miracles with it. Yeah. 
if people will get a hold of that idea, like this youth pastor, all he did was just notice me, first of all, right. because I, I had issues with being less than and not being good at anything mm-hmm. and not in, and always feeling less than, being small, being bullied, being whatever, mm-hmm. just never measuring up, right? Yeah. And he noticed me and was nice to me and was kind to me hmm. and gave me this and said, man, I think you would like this. And I never have forgotten that. And I think if people would realize, you know, like that's the gospel. Yep. The gospel is being kind, being kind, especially to the people that they don't know. Kind, they, no one's being kind to them. Everyone's yeah. overlooking them, yeah. you know, whether it's a disability or whether it's, you know, something that separates them from you they're or awkward, the group, or they're awkward, quiet, socially or awkward, yeah, this yeah. thing or that thing. And, and no one is noticing them. And when you notice them, Dude, it's it's a miracle. Yeah, and that that was some fish and some loaves of bread. He said, he goes, here's this White Cross album, and God took it and then just blew it up in my life, you know. And I've discovered Striper and Petra and mm-hmm. uh, Guardian and Bride and all these Christian rock bands of the late '80s and early '90s. And I would go watch them perform, and they would talk about Jesus from the stage. And I was telling you on the bus, I was yeah. like. These guys are so bold because my friends are like, they're talking about Jesus. That's weird, you know? And I was like, and they're just, they're like, yeah, they're, the, the church isn't, the, the church isn't on their team. The church thinks that they're evil because they're rock music. Right. And then, you know, uh, non Christians think they're weird because they're talking about Jesus. Yeah. Like, these are, these are men without a country. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. True. And I was like, they're so bold and courageous. I was just blown away by it. And so I was like, this is what I, this, I, this is what I want to do. Wow. So there were some kids in middle school that started a band and, they're like, we need a singer. And I was like, I'll do it. And I never even asked. I was like, this is what we're singing about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, these are my heroes. Dude, I was like, that's these, what's this up. Is, this is what we're, we're going to do. I didn't really even think that there was an option to being a Christian band any other way. I thought it was evangelism. I didn't know you could just be. And that's na- na- the naivety of a, of a kid. Yeah. I didn't know you could just be a Christian and create art. Right. I thought right. it was just like evangelism. Yeah. And. And so my mind was like, boom, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And I think God had it in that, you know, because I have so many friends who are Christians who create art and, and, uh, you know, my very, very good friend, Matt from spoken, uh, who is, is just an incredible, he's been doing it almost as long, right about yeah. as long as I have. Matt's you know, cool, man. I've, he, I've hung out with him. He is a yeah, wonderful he's cool, human man. being, but he's like, you know, speaking is not, is, is not my thing. Yeah. And a, a, in the early days, I, I didn't understand that. I was like, oh, I thought that was why we were all doing, we were doing this, but that's just, you know, being ignorant and being a Just for the record though, kid. for the listeners, Kevin is a hardcore evangelist. <laughs> I mean, you got, you got both. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm jealous. Okay. You got it both. You can, you can, you can <laughs> sing. I can't sing for the life of me. And you can evangelize. Wow. That's amazing. That's well, so awesome. Well, like I said, that's that's why that's why we started doing it, and and I wasn't good at it at all for a long time. I think I was. I grew up in the South, kind of you know Bible Belt, very black and white. You know, everybody's going to hell. Uh, you know, and uh, I've heard about that. I, I have. I got to hear some messages about that. Yeah, and so I think I was a little. I think I was a little fiery. Uh, but you know, my life has taken so many turns of just not having it all together. Yeah. I, totally. I really eased up on everybody <laughs> yeah. when I figured out, you know, like I don't have it all together. And, uh, yeah. you know, God it really being very kind and very gracious to yeah. me and really learning that the gospel is is for not just for people that are lost, but also for his, his children, you yeah. know, and grace yep. is for his children. Um, that, that whole idea that Christians have it all together, it really makes us um, isolate whenever we're messed up. It yeah. really makes us afraid to talk to people, afraid yes. to be honest and be like, yeah. we don't want to tell people like, Hey man, I'm tempted or I struggle yep. or I, you know, I'm not sure if I'm addicted. Yeah. I think I'm addicted. I might be, I don't know. You know, and you're a Christian, you're supposed to have it all together or you're an evangelist mm-hmm. or you're a leader mm-hmm. yeah, or you're, you know, this kind of thing. And, yep. and you're a good person and you really do mean what you're saying about Jesus, yep. but you're also struggling with real world stuff. And now you're afraid to tell anybody about it. And I'm going to leave it right there. Cause yeah. we're going to go to break. And this is really amazing topic that I want to pick up on sure. after the show, because this is, this is a real deal within the church and um, you can isolate yourself. And that as you isolate, you fall away from God. So we're going to be back in uh, two minutes, uh, right after break with Kevin lead singer of disciple peace. More. 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now, back, back, back to The Ryan Reese Show. All right, we are back. I don't know if you guys have been tuning into the first half, but it's been amazing. Fire at the first half. Good Good nuggets uh, from Kevin Young, from uh, the lead singer of Disciple. Uh, We are on tour right now. We are in uh, Idaho in the very north, and we are heading down to uh, Boise, and they're taking off uh, down to California and some other states. I mean, this tour is like, you have several more dates, right? It just continues for the next couple months. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a big deal. New album out and, and a new tour, just amazing things. And I'm on the bus hanging out with him. I got the privilege to get invited to roll out, and uh, it's been amazing. But um, let's right before the break, you were talking about um, about people that uh, you know they get isolated because sure. uh, they have sin. They 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 think that they have to have it all figured out, and you realize that God has mercy and grace on your on, on yourself because you came from the south and it was more like everyone's going to hell and you're yeah well and, 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 and when you're a christian you know you have certain standards and you, you yeah you, you do certain things and totally things that you don't do yeah and then if you are doing some of those things at the same time you know then you're a hypocrite or you're mm-hmm. not real or you're this thing or that thing and everybody has to go through um what they what they want to decide is right or wrong. Everybody has to figure that out, you know, for themselves. Yeah. I like, you know, when most people come up to me and they're they're like, "Hey, do you think it's okay to whatever?" And I'm like, well, "What does the Bible say about it?" Yeah. You know, and they're like, yeah. "Well, it says this," but I'm like, "I'm like, you need to figure that out for your for yourself because I am I can't mm-hmm. I can't like tell you I can't make I can't make up your mind for you. Everyone has their own convictions. You have to, and it's like, what do you, you know? Usually, usually you're asking that question because you're trying to figure out how to whatever, uh-huh. you know. And it's it's more like the question: what if you what if, what if you what if you're asking the wrong question? What is the right question to be asking? And it's more like, what does God want me to do with my life instead yeah. of is it okay to do this or is yeah. it okay to do that? Yeah, you know, yeah. can we have all this freedom? But not everything's good for you, right? Yeah. Not everything's healthy. Not everything's beneficial. And, exactly. And so, like, even the things that I'm free to do, like watching NFL on Sunday, I'm sitting here like, I probably shouldn't watch this much NFL, you know? <laughs> I probably, it's not that it's wrong. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with it. But anyway, all that to say. Because, you know, in the back of your head, you're like, because there's things that you like a lot. And you're you like, like you're like, this is kind of like, yeah. I'm kind of doing this too much. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you're a Christian... You know, everybody's told you this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And you know what I've learned is is this is uh it's the it's the analogy of fire. Is fire is is a wonderful, amazing, beautiful thing that God has blessed us with. You know, you can cook with it, you can warm yourself up, you know, with it. It has its uses. Right. And um but if you mishandle fire, if you are careless with fire, it will burn your house down mm-hmm. and it will destroy your life. And that's the thing is that, you know, we have to understand as Christians, we leave, we leave the door cracked open sometimes to sin. Mm-hmm. And we, we have too many gray areas in sin. And, you know, especially for people who are leaders like you and, and myself, you know, we'll have these little doors cracked open in these little gray areas. And the thing that is a problem with those is that, the door just keeps getting open mm-hmm. and a little bit more mm-hmm. and a little bit more and then a little bit more. And then you know that other people are like, that's not good. You shouldn't do that. And you're like, well, I just, you know, but I'm free, uh, you know, and I can do this, I can do that. And then, you know, and then it gets open a little bit more. And then you're like, wait, I'm not in control anymore, but I'm a Christian and I love Jesus and I'm working for him, but I have this secret now. Yep. And now who can I tell? And you're like, I can't tell anybody. And so you just hide it. And guess, guess what happens? You keep trying and you're up and you're down, and you're up and you're down, you know, and that's, that's the story of my life, you know, out of, out of respect for my family. I don't, I don't get into specifics totally. you know, about my addictions. There was more than one of them. Um, you know, and, uh, again, out of, out of respect for them, I don't, you know, get t- too far into detail, but, um, Man, I was I was struggling and I was hurting and I needed I needed people in my life. I needed a I needed a, a men's group. I needed pastors. I needed friends. I needed to be honest with my family. I needed to be honest with my wife. I mm-hmm. needed uh, uh, 
a counselor, a, a marriage counselor. I needed a 12 step program. I needed everything I could get my hands on, mm. not just Jesus. And I know that that message is probably just sounds, you know, really, really bad to a lot of people who are preach, you know, just, you know, mm-hmm. just Jesus from the stage. Mm-hmm. But I found out this verse that's, you know, in the Bible it says, confess your sins one to another that mm-hmm. you may find healing. Yep. And I found that to be very powerful because the, at a certain point in my life, I found out that I, I, I just misused God or didn't trust him mm-hmm. or knew that his love would just keep forgiving mm-hmm. me, you know, mm-hmm. but guess who won't keep forgiving you <laughs> people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You start opening up to people yep. and you start hurting people, yep. you start letting people down, start abusing people, start yep. whatever. Guess who guess who won't forgive you every time you go to them? Yep. You know, people. Yeah. And you want those people in your life and you love them and uh, you start being honest with them and confessing, you know, your sins to them and it it changes things. And the threat of losing people in your life, you know, it's I think it's I think it's really good to go to marriage counseling or even if you're like, I have friends that are, that are like I, when I, I prayed and God touched my life and I didn't go back to drugs and alcohol. Um, cause I used to abuse them. Um, but I have a friend, uh, you know, a couple friends, but one guy in particular, he, uh, he's a Christian. He goes to church, he loves Jesus, but he also goes to AA cause he wants that. He wants some extra, you know, yeah. counseling or whatever. These, these, these things are good. And, and, and a lot of people need them and some people don't, some people could just be more like just Jesus when it came to the drugs and alcohol, it just, just Jesus worked for me. Exactly. You know? Um, so it's different strokes for different folks, but yeah. yeah and I sure. think if you're dogmatic and you say one or the other, you're kind of missing, missing out like some yeah. like, like God had this in there for a reason. And, yeah. and I tell people this all the time, like, you know, confessing your sins, like on social media, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad idea, you know, or just like blurting it out or, you know, whatever, unless you feel like that's what God's calling you to do, but just, just doing it to do it. You know, I, I, I find it better to, to talk to people who actually love Jesus, yeah. who have been where you have been, yeah. who know what it's like to be in, in those situations, yes. to know what it's like to face what you're facing. Uh, and again, it goes back to being the real you, you know, yeah. like if I'm talking about something I didn't really struggle with, well, I don't have any business talking about that. Yes. But when somebody comes to me and they're like, man, I'm struggling with this. You're like, okay. Yeah. I've been there, man. Totally. I know. I know what's up. I know. I know what you're going through. This is what I did. I don't know if this can help you, but this is, this is my story. Then your story has, mm-hmm. it just so much weight, so much credibility, yep. so much value. Absolutely. At that point. Absolutely. But the biggest news i got from all that is the is the gospels for me the gospel is is my calling didn't go away my title didn't change yeah when i was a prodigal son more than once in the back of a police car in jail in a 12-step program in a in a room bawling my eyes out confessing my sins to my wife um my title never changed Mm -hmm. i was still son yeah. And even though I was like going home going, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, just the prodigal son. Like that's, yep. that's what we think. He doesn't love me anymore. He just, yeah, I've screwed everything up. I should be, you know, forever, whatever. And guess what? The world does think that yep. if a leader messes up. Yeah. If a leader messes yep. up, the world is like out of here. Totally. You are done. Yeah. But yeah. guess what? That's not the gospel. Yeah. Gosh. Yep. That's not, it's just not, there's no, there's no, there's no perfect there's no perfect people, right? Mm-hmm. We're all sinners saved by grace, but through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, God, he transforms you to a new creation. But Satan's also very smart too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he you. studies us. What exactly. does it say? Uh, in, in Job, we just quoting that, you know, uh, he, asked him, he asked Satan, you know, where have you been? Why have you been going to and fro? He's studying. He was studying yeah, Job to see how he could take him out. And Satan, uh, he does the same thing. He's constantly studying yes. us. Uh, to to take us out, but I, I like the fact that you were saying how you have to confess your sins to to your friends. Yes, and, and you, you get those people around you. You have to you have to figure out yourself. You have to figure out your own boundaries. Yeah, you have to be comfortable with your boundaries. You have to be comfortable with being around friends who have different boundaries than yeah. you. Yeah, you know. Yep. And like you're, they're let they're they're okay to do X Y and Z, and you're like, hey man, I, and just be cool with being like. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever. You have to create your own boundaries. Those those doors that are mm-hmm. kind of cracked open, you got to yeah. shut them. Yeah. You know, some it, people it, can th- leave them open and that's fine. But like for me, 
I, a lot of doors I have to shut. That, that's the thing I also want to hit. And I'm glad you brought that back up. The cracking the door open. I call that like uh, subtle compromises. Yes. You know, and you know, down deep inside that you should be like, yes, in that area, I guess, of yes. life. And you kind of open it up. And yes. what happens is that slow open next time it's like, oh, you open a little bit more. And, and next, you know, this, this, whatever you're involved with is, is greater. Just like I, I've talked to, you know, people like it could be like a musician or a pastor. Let's just use a pastor for an example. Okay. All of a sudden you hear a story and the pastor's like, Oh my gosh, for 30 years, he's been sleeping with women in his congregation or for 10 years or five years. And you're like, what? When that pastor went into pastoring, I guarantee he was not sleeping with people in his congregation. It was slow, subtle. What opened his mind and his eyes to start slowly engaging with women? It was some, you know, slow conversations, maybe take her out to coffee, have a little conversation outside, you know, whatever it is, it was a, it was a subtle co compromise, a little bit open, a little bit open more. And then next, you know, here you are. And that's the thing is where we have to be alert of what the Holy Spirit is telling us and listen to the promptings is when he's like, when he's telling you, Hey, you're in a zone that you should not be, you got to close that door. Don't even mess with it because Satan He's he's studying us. He's watching us. Absolutely, and 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 most people that hear that would think that guy's life's over now. But guess what? Yep. It's not. Yeah. And so, what does he need to do at that point? Yep. Is like, all right, let's close the doors. Let's figure out. You know, like, what is it for? What is it for you? You know, for for me, and I talked to other guys that, who, who dealt with, you know, similar things to me, and um, it's like you have to figure out, you know, the boundaries that you need, and sometimes it's healthy to to be alone yep. and sometimes it's healthy to not be alone right you got to know where you know you got to know where you are what you need yeah you got to have those people on speed dial yes you know yes and uh you were talking to me about a friend of yours like yep. calling you on speed dial He's yeah like, i'm in this situation yep i don't know what i'm gonna do oh my gosh what are you doing? and you're like don't do it you gotta have that yeah you yeah. gotta have that honesty you know yeah. for me like having it out all on the table and being honest and waking up with no secrets yeah. that's good for me Cause when I've got secrets, you know, like that's when I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm in shame world. Honesty. You said that from the stage, honesty, honesty, you have to have honesty. You have to have honesty and, and, uh -huh. and, and like be okay uh -huh. to forgive yourself. The hardest thing I've ever had to do is forgive myself. Yeah, man. I've forgiven everybody else that's ever hurt me, but forgiving myself because uh, it's just, you know, terrible things, just mm -hmm. terrible, awful things, you know, happen. And you're just like, how, how, you know, how can I get back on stage and talk about Jesus? Mm -hmm. and, it, and you're like, because he is worth it and yeah. his grace is that powerful yep. and his love for this generation is that powerful. And they need to know there's Christians out there in that are struggling, that are addicted, that think that he's done with them. Yep. They're listening they think right that now. He is done with them. Yep. They think that they were used to be a leader and they're like, I've messed it up. I screwed it up and there's no way. And he'll never use me again. He's done with me. He'll use and you. they need to know that their title never changed. No. He'll they just need you. to they just need to come back and shut some doors. The prodigal just, son story. It's the all there. Prodigal son story. It's it, right it there. It is literally all there. You think you're no longer worthy to be called a son, but you Peter. are. What about Peter? Deny Jesus. Imagine looking, denying the Son of God three times. I've never, ever been in a position where I was worthy to be used. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. There was never a righteousness that I've achieved where I was yeah. worthy to be used. And ne neither is anybody else. So the idea that at some point we were good enough. Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. We never were. Never. And so people need to know the gospel is for them too. Mm -hmm. It's not over for you. But you, yeah, you have to treat this world like fire. You have to put the fire in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. If you let the fire get out of the fireplace, it will burn your house down. Mm -hmm. It will ruin your life. Yeah. And um, it, but more importantly, what I had to learn, it'll ruin the people around me's life. Yeah. You, you know? affect them. Yeah. It, it, you can't. You, you can't just secretly sin, and just believe that you, you're the only person that's hurting. Yeah. It's going to get out. The fire is yeah. going to get out. It's going to burn your house down, your relationships down, your your work down, everything that you've it done. It affects everyone it, around you. Ev everyone around you. You know, you have to figure it out. You have to take it seriously, I guess. Yeah. Is, is really, and, be and be afraid of it. Respect it. You have a healthy respect 
for the fire that you're that you're playing with you know mm -hmm. and i think that's i think that's um you know we walk that out with God. You know, remember, you, you, I, I think you said this in your testimony. He, this is like, he, he dealt with you like kind of one thing at a time. Yep, one thing at a time. You yeah. know? Yeah, so like I, I prayed. I said, God, you know, forgive me of my sins. I was The first thing was confessing, right? And then we're reading the Bible, praying every day, and just trying to hear, know who God was. And he took the drugs and alcohol over, over out of my life overnight. But then the porn was like six months later. And then cigarettes was like a year and a half later. And then, you know, there was like, you know, I, I, has, I used to have a really, really bad potty mouth. Um, that that definitely went down a lot pretty much, you know, after a couple of weeks of like from what it was. It was like it was like F word after every word before. It was just crazy. Um, but, um, yeah. And French it, toast. It, huh? French toast was the F word. French, French toast. It was yes. like French toast. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. I like that. So, Falafel. But no, Falafel's but then, they, you know. And then, you know, uh, other things, you got to start forgiving yourself, forgiving people. And it's just, a it's, dude, you're a work in progress, right? Yes. It's a work in progress. And um, also that's, you can relate that also back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the, sh the, beginning of the show. Like, don't think you're going to be able to achieve all this immediately, the goal. Like, it's, it's just along the journey, walk with God, let him, if you keep making the same mistakes over and over and you feel like, you know, you can't get any freedom, just keep going after God and one day to the next, he'll do it. Just keep going after him and let him know you love him and just live for him, you know, day by day. Can, can I just, I just want to say this one thing. Yeah. Say a couple things. <laughs> Being free mm -hmm. is so good. Mm -hmm. It feels so good. And, you know, I know that some people get that freedom the moment that they prayed but there were other areas of your life that took time right oh t yeah several areas and then when you finally got free of each each thing isn't it like this most amazing thing and especially if you're in addiction or in a, a stronghold or mm -hmm. in a habitual sin yeah and you're like i'm never getting out of this yeah i'm never getting free from this mm -hmm. i am never whatever and you start to believe that yep and then you're finally free I mean, we wrote a song called 2020 Blind, and it's really that, like, just me, like, that, you know, like, dude, this Corvette's going 300 miles an hour tonight. You know, that's how, that's what I feel like. Yeah. I'm, like, so fired up because it's that feeling of freedom. That's what Jesus does in us. For some, he does it overnight. For some, he does it through 12-step programs. Yep. For some, he does yeah. it through lie detector tests, you know. Yeah. For some, he does it, you know, through... Uh, uh, through counseling so some he does it through men's group women's group you know for for some you know he he does it in all kinds of different ways yeah yeah but you got to figure out you know we've put all this uh you know 12 steps i talk about that you put all this effort into acting out yeah all this scheming yep you know and Descending, how to get yep. away all this scheming all this clever whatever and how to <sighs> how to like hide how to whatever what if you just put just a little bit of that effort into getting right that's what me, uh, my friend that does, he co-hosts uh, the show with me sometimes, Sean McKeon, and he was saying, man, we used to put so much effort yeah. into partying and sinning, yes. everything. Yeah. Dude, if you put all that effort, or just a little bit, like you said, yeah, a little bit. of what, how much you used to work hard to sin, your life would change. Yeah. You talk about putting in, you're going to get it out. You know? Yeah. Garbage in, garbage you, you, out. You, if you're whatever. putting in you know good people around you and yeah. that's that's that, that their influence is is yeah. being like planted into your life uh the bible and you know going to church you're putting you know this this in your soul and your spirit you yeah. know is being planted in in your heart it's going to and we talked about the other night as well consistency it's yeah. literally you will you will reap what you sow but yeah. you have to you have to be consistent in putting the good the good yeah. things planting the good things mm -hmm. you know in your life like we put all that effort into scheming you know and it was planting terrible things in our life. Guess what? We reaped those things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, uh, one of the biggest issues now, uh, globally, why we have this whole mental health crisis, worldwide emergency and all this is because, um, there you're reaping to what you're so you're, if you're, if you're watching and you're partaking in sin in your life, well, that's the side effects are the anxiety, the depression, and all yeah. the stuff coming out. All the stuff that you're dealing with that you hate about you, it's because what you're partaking in. But if you reap what you sow, if you start sowing the things of the spirit, you're gonna reap the things of the spirit. And and 
I feel like, you know, that we live in a culture where there's so much stuff that we could watch on our phones that could literally yeah. just be jacking your spirit up and you don't yes. even realize it. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It, you know what? Well, I'm so thankful for everything that I've went through. And I know that's a weird thing to say because I'm sure the people that were hurt along the way aren't thankful. Yeah. You know? But whenever you go through these things, and you come out the other side, you know, and I'm talking to people from the stage about this. Um, you know, what I what I want them to hear, mm -hmm. what I want them to know is like that life is precious. Yeah. Every every moment is precious. Their life is precious. Yep. And this this Christianity thing that God is wanting us to walk out, it's not just about us being good. Yeah. It's not about us just making good choices. <laughs> It literally is about loving each other, mm -hmm. which means we have to learn how to love people who are struggling. And that's, that's a new ball game. We have to learn how to love people and forgive people who mess up. We have to learn how, how, how to do that. And that kind of, that kind of love, man, that's, we talk about life being precious and people's lives being worth it. And, um, you know, like you figure out how to how to do that. Well, now I'm not just being good to be good. I'm being good because I love my God. Right. I'm being good because I love my band. I'm being good. You know, I'm being good because I love my family. I'm being I'm making good choices out of love as opposed to just some, you know, Step one, two, three, four, five, and now I can yeah. feel good about myself. You know, like this whole Christian thing is like there's one word that describes God. One word. You can. You, what does He look like? What does He dress like? What does He smell like? Right. It's God is love. love. Yeah. And what is that? What is what does love look like? Is it oh, this googly feeling? No, it is this. It is this thing that is powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, all this insecurity in my life, a fear of wanting to fight and 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 be in fights. That's just fear. It's fear, yeah. That is it's easy. Yeah. Oh, it's easy to fight. If somebody does me wrong, I'm, I'm mad, I want to get them back. That's easy. That doesn't take effort. No. True strength is love. Yes, true. True strength says, I'm going to pray for you. True, true strength is, I forgive you for bullying me. I forgive you for abusing me. True strength is is saying, you know, like, my, the, I'm good. this is what my Father in Heaven is teaching me how to do. It's easy to take for myself. It's a whole nother ball game when you give everything from yourself. For God so loved the world, he gave. gave. Yeah. God is love. Somebody told me this one time. They said, lust always takes, love always gives. gives. So you want, you want to know which one you're doing, you know, put it under that microscope and that test. That's good. And, you know, you say, you, you know, love, if you're giving, you know, what did Jesus get back, you know, for, for it? It's like he wasn't even worried about what he got. See, not everybody he died for believed in him. Right. But he gave anyway. Mm -hmm. There was no conditions. He was like, "Well, if you love, I mean, you get straight, then we're gonna talk. Then I'm gonna yeah. love you." You know, no, no, no. That's not Christianity, man. And like true Christianity is walking towards that. It's not about living it out perfectly. It's about having a goal and walking towards that goal. Yeah. If you got things in your life that are making you love less, get rid of them. My, 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 I say this: my father just died. Like your, the stuff he's got, keep it, sell it, throw it away. If you got stuff in your life that's making the the love. Your, the action of love in your life go go down. Get rid of it. If it's making you love less, get rid of it. You got an addiction of making you love it. Get rid of it. Whatever it is, get rid of it. Because that's what life is all about: is how we love, not whether we say a bad word, not yeah, whether yeah, we're yeah. this or that. It's how we love because that's the treasure stored up in heaven that people remember when you're gone. They don't remember. Uh, I don't think that guy watched R-rated movies. You know, like who cares about no, that? They're like, I remember. He loved me, yeah. but nobody else would. He was kind to me. He gave me that Christian metal album when nobody else noticed me. I don't know what his problems were. I don't know what his sins yeah. were. I don't know what any, yeah. but I know what I know what he did well. He noticed me. He loved me. That's what'll change the world. What did Jesus say? He says, uh, "They will know you're my disciples for your love for one another." Love for he one says, another. "Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself." It's all it's all based in it's love. There. And that is, I like how you said that it's that's the hardest thing to do. It's easy to go get drunk. It's easy to easy. go get fight. It's easy. easy to please me. Easy. But to actually love God 
with all, your heart, with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. That's true power. That is. And the only way you can do that with the neighbor is if you love God. The relationship. It has to be that supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. It can't be, like, you can try all you want. No. You can try all you want, the fake accent. It's just a fake accent. Exactly. But whenever you have the, whenever you really grow up in the South, you have a Southern accent. Yeah, southern. Whenever you really have a relationship with God, you pick up his accent. And yeah. that is, his accent is love. There it is. All right. Well, man, this show was epic, dude. Thank you. We, we <laughs> Thank could, you, buddy. We could vibe out. Man, we could do shows all night. But we got a concert to, you know. We do. To attend to. Um, all right. Well, uh, Kevin Young, the lead singer of Disciple. Uh, find them. Disciple Rocks is the, is the IG. And you're on IG. What, what's your IG? Is it Kevin Disciple? Disciple Kevin. Disciple Kevin. Um, check it out. I'm posting videos right now of highlights of the concert. Get their albums. They're, they're on Apple and all the other uh, resources. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.